Today's recipe is Baba Ganoush. Well, Baba Ganoush needs really no introduction, but however, for the uninitiated, it's an eggplant-based starter. Baba Ganoush can be broken up into two words, Baba and Ganoush, where Baba literally translates to a father-like figure, and Ganoush means the pampered one. So literally, like a pampered father or the pampered royal king. Today's recipe, like I said, is Baba Ganoush. Let's begin. This recipe uses a large eggplant, which of course needs to be um, given slight few gashes because we're going to roast this. Now this could be roasted on an open flame. You could use a bhatti, you can use a tandoor, however you're comfortable. What's important is to give it a few gashes and just to kind of open it to check if it has worms of any kind. If there are, discard that or use it for another recipe. It could be a sabzi or something like that. So the first things first is to give it a few gashes like so. And you just press it like so and check if there is anything untoward. Once you green light the whole process, we move further with roasting this. Now, before roasting, what you could also do as just a process, you could start this with a few cloves of garlic that just adds in that wonderful nuance of flavor. However, in this recipe, I'm going to use crushed garlic later. So the choice is completely yours. One of the major reasons why gashes are important is because it also has water within as a vegetable and you do not want it to burst while roasting or while pan frying. Turn the flame on and place this like so. We're going to, of course, keep turning it. Ensure that the flame is hit on all the sides so that it not only gets roasted from the outside, but also becomes soft, mushy and cooked from within. The moment the heat hits the surface of the eggplant, you will notice that the pores or the gashes just kind of open up. So ensure that the gashes are not too wide and too large. Otherwise, the eggplant will just kind of burst open on top of the flame. I'm going to use the other burner as well because I've got two eggplants here. If you're making this for a restaurant or for a catering operation, what you could also do is put this on a long metal rod or a skewer and put it in the tandoor. As simple as it can get. This is going to take roughly 10 to 12 minutes. It could run into 15, 20 minutes, but ensure that the eggplant is well charred on the outside and automatically because of the heat seeping in through the gashes, it'll start getting cooked from within. From the deep purple color that it has now on the exterior, you will start seeing that the moment the heat hits the surface, it'll start becoming slightly paler, slightly on the lavenderish side. And then the color, of course, will intensify and take it to brown or even black. You literally need to char this completely well. Keep turning this, keep rolling it over and over again, but ensure that the flame hits each side at least for 45 seconds to a minute so that that particular part starts getting charred. Now, what is the sign that the eggplant or the aubergine is cooked from within? There are two, three things. One, you'll start seeing that the natural oil from the eggplant or the aubergine would start dripping, which would be almost like maple syrup. Then you would also see that water would start bubbling on the surface outside and it'll become beautifully well charred on the outside. I'm apologizing in advance because you're going to mess up the burners completely while doing this. Pick this very carefully because it may just kind of loosen up even where the handle is or the stock is. Let's cover this like so, so that the steam that would now generate would also build up with some smoke and that would also infuse the aubergine from within. Let's keep this aside and allow this to cool down completely. Also allow the burners to cool down completely before we start the cleaning process. Let's start cutting a few vegetables. In this case, tomatoes, onions and some green capsicum. The first thing is to cut an onion nice and fine, absolutely fine. You also get to see how I'm cutting an onion. Nevertheless, if you want like a detailed discourse on how to cut an onion, check the link below. Let's transfer this in a bowl, clean the board and move on to tomatoes. The tomatoes also need to be cut nice and fine. Now the choice here is whether to remove the seeds or not. It's a complete personal choice. I do not uh, wish to remove the tomato seeds and I've never removed it professionally. But like I said, the choice is completely yours. Let's transfer this as well. Post to which, of course, we need to clean the board, patch it dry and move on to green capsicum. Well, in case you do not want to add capsicum, you can add in green chilies, you can add in jalapenos, poblanos, choices completely us. 
when you're using of course the other chilies you need to be slightly mindful of the whole demographics of the people that are going to eat the baba ganoush if it's for a child avoid the green chilies of course if your child is eating spicy and hot food choice is yours while cutting a capsicum it's important to of course deseed it and also remove the contours of the capsicum let's transfer the capsicum as well and the next step is to bring back the hero ingredient eggplants of course and peel them if you see closely the aubergines that are beautifully charred on the outside have now become slightly moist now that moisture is going to help in removing the skin now of course it's slightly warm at this stage it has not cooled down completely but nevertheless the temperature is kind of manageable in my case while ideally you're supposed to remove every little bit of the charred skin but nevertheless if a few bits here and there remain it's absolutely fine you do not have to worry do not wipe this do not wash this because that way all the flavor will run out let's transfer this on the cutting board because that's where it's anyway going to head next moving on to peeling the next one as well it's as simple as pinching and pulling it apart I'm going to place this as well on the cutting board and the whole idea here is to snip the stalk off because of course that's not going to be required in this recipe with the help of the knife blade i'm just going to scrape the top off like so so that the residual chips of skin charred skin get knocked off as well and the whole idea here is to chop this roughly now there are two three ways this could be chopped you could either mash this with the help of a fork or you could actually chop this there's also a way in which you could make a mutabbal now that's very different from the classic baba ganoush where of course the ingredients are different you add in tahini in that you add in garlic you add in curd you whip it and it's nice and creamy baba ganoush on the contrary is chunky because it also has the chunky bits of vegetables that's the basic difference but it's a huge difference it's a, another recipe altogether Now I'm going to move this paring knife aside. I'm going to take a big knife and chop this roughly. Another way that I was talking about is basically taking a fork and mashing it like so, so that you get that soft fiber of the eggplant as well. Well, that also adds in to the mouth feel. Well, this in today's culinary world is also referred to as the aubergine caviar. Well, in case you feel the eggplant has too many seeds. just discard this blob of seed nevertheless it just adds in wonderfully to the bite of this the whole idea here is while we're doing this i'm going to move this aside because that's not of any use as of now i'm also scraping the fork off and i'm going to chop this roughly now this is chopped and ready let's transfer this in a deep bowl which is also going to multiply now as the mixing bowl for this recipe. Let's start adding in the ingredients now to of course the mashed aubergine. The first of all ingredient is garlic. Now in a lot of cases and a lot of countries this is treated as an absolute optional ingredient. Moving on, chopped red onions followed by chopped tomatoes, chopped capsicum or chilies in whichever case. and some freshly squeezed lemon well this is going to add in that zing in the recipe that whole freshness in the recipe you can also use lemons for all you care that's also going to add in a wonderful layer of flavor just ensure that you collect all the seeds you do not want any surprises in your mouth while eating the baba ganoush maybe another half as well well you can adjust all these ingredients depending on your taste that you prefer you can make it slightly sour you can add in some chili flakes personalize it finally salt as required the next step is as simple as mixing all of this and pushing it on the table but with some pita bread i have some pita bread here with me which i'm just going to give a few grill marks just warm it up slightly and that's going to be the most amazing accompaniment for a baba ganoush let's mix all of this well let's do a quick tasting 
Hmm. Perfectly smoked, perfectly mixed, well salted, with that freshness of lemon. Let's transfer this straight in the serving bowl. Now I'm going to take the back of a spoon and create a little bit of a well right in the center. Now for that, you of course need to push the baba ganoush to the walls of the plate, like so. Of course, you can even this out slightly. And this cavity or this well now needs to be centered with extra virgin olive oil. Of course, also want to drizzle a little on the walls so that the sides do not dry out. I'm going to place some tomatoes right in the center. And finally, two ingredients that are not only going to add in color and vibrancy to this recipe, but also layers of flavor. Freshly cut parsley. And finally, some chili flakes. Eventually, we're going to serve this with grilled pita and have fun. Push it on one of the sides, keep the rest in like a bread basket. And with this, you have the most amazing conversation starter on your dinner table. Make this for your family, make this for your friends and go all out and party. With this, this is me, the Bombay chef Varun Amdar signing off. Bye for now. And if you're making this, you can't escape the cleaning.